All right, uh, today's topics, topic five, what channel is that? Um, so electromagnetic spectrum or the electromagnetic uh, radiation, um, we've talked about this a little bit um, in grade eight as well. So it's in the late 19th century when scientists found out that light is just one form of electromagnetic radiation. Um, so if we look at this figure, um, here we see our visible light. To the left, we see infrared radiation, microwaves, radio waves. To the right, we see ultraviolet radiation, x-rays, and gamma rays. Okay, so those are other forms um, of electromagnetic radiation. Infrared radiation or infrared waves um, that we can feel as heat. One second. All right, so we're going to focus, though, on radio astronomy and radio telescopes today. So radio astronomy, it's using radio waves to learn more about the composition of stars. So we'll talk a little bit about radio telescopes. So in 1932, um, we have this engineer, Carl Jansky. He built a radio antenna. And using this antenna, he learned to identify radio emissions that rose and set with the sun, planets, and the stars. And so from these observations, he concluded that these radio wave sources were coming from space. Um, next, we have Grote uh, Reber. He was a radio engineer and, and also an amateur astronomer. And he explored Jansky's discovery further. So he built a radio dish, also known as a radio telescope, and he listened to the sky during the 1930s. And so he discovered that the strongest radio waves, they came from particular places in the sky. Um, he thought that there must be some sort of radio objects in space that were responsible for those emissions. And he would also hear hissing static. Um, that hiss would become louder when he turned in to an area in space that was giving off large amounts of radio waves. Um, and those um, are called the bright uh, radio objects. Um, these are objects in space that give off large amounts of radio waves. Um, so, so building on those, um, those concepts, um, scientists began to build bigger radio scopes, radio um, telescopes, and explore further. Um, so radio waves, they have wavelengths that are millions of times longer than light waves. So this means that radio waves can provide images with less resolution than light waves, but these radio waves are able to penetrate dust clouds in the galaxy where visible light stops. So these radio telescopes, they were able to give astronomers information about the universe that they never had before from just exploring um, visible light. So seeing, it's in quotation, so seeing radio waves, they cannot, these, these are radio telescopes, they cannot see radio sources. So what, what, what happens is, is there's movement of dials and needles that are monitored um, from those incoming radio waves. That needle, it's similar to something you would see on an ammeter or voltmeter. So then the astronomers would then graph that data. Today we have computers that store that data and then they will false color it to produce images of the radio waves. And that color is coded to that strength of the signal. So blues are usually used for low intensities. And then the signal, as it gets stronger, those colors will then go to greens, yellows, reds, and whites. So I believe I do have an image here. So this here is an image. This is a visible light image of Centaur, Centaurus A, um, an active radio galaxy, 16 million light years away. Um, so you can see like a central nu nucleus of the galaxy, then you see like a lane of dust across it. This is a radio image of Centaurus A. Um, you can kind of see here um, similarities and differences between the visible light and the radio telescope. Um, so next, connecting radio telescopes. So next, astronomers, they continued improvements and they improved radio images by connecting telescopes. So two radio telescopes, 
and more recently even optical telescopes. Um, they are separated by some distance, but they can be connected electronically. And then their signals can be combined using a computer. And then that image that is result, the resulting image, it's as good as if one telescope was used. That was as big as the distance between the two. And that's called interferometry. So it's a technology that will electronically connect two or more separate telescopes to combine their images. Okay, and it's like seeing with many eyes instead of one. Okay, all right, and next we're going to talk about VLBI, and that stands for Very Long Baseline Interferometry. So this is a technology that will combine images from telescopes anywhere on Earth um, using timing marks no wires. Um, so it can produce images that are 100 times as detailed as the largest optical telescopes that exist today. So what they're doing is they're combining signals from any radio telescopes in the world, okay, as many um, as they want or need. Um, and they'll record each telescope signal with timing marks. Those signals will then be transferred to computer disks, they're loaded onto a central computer, and then they're combined to form one image. All right, so I have a couple videos here, so I'm gonna pause here.